Three zones max, and we're back. <laughs> we're doing a uh, movie review. I was going to do one on a uh, Christian movie, but it was so uh, poorly written and so racist that maybe I'll get to that one in a couple of days because that, that ticked me off. What I'll do is I'll do a review on a movie that many of you have probably seen. It's been out for a year, and it is the most horrible thing that's really ever been put to film. It cost about $250 million. Of course, it made a lot of money, but it destroyed the entire legacy of the genre and Star Wars. We're going to talk about Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Of course, I'm going to hell because, you know, you watch Star Wars, but whatever. This movie <clears throat> fundamentally broke everything in Star Wars canon. You can look here at um, the IMDb or what is this, Rotten Tomatoes. 91% by critics. Give me a break. I mean, it, it was poorly written. And, you know, as a movie overall, off the top of my head, as a movie, I'll give it a five, maybe a six for the visuals. But as a Star Wars movie, it's like negative 20, okay? Because it breaks the entire Star Wars stuff. And there's this thing called canon. Where if you're breaking canon... You're really messing up bad, man. Really messing up bad. Audience score, 45%. That means that <clears throat> less than half of the people like the movie. Less than half. Now I'll try and cut some things in here so you don't have to look at me and you don't have to look at the Rotten Tomato screen as I talk about this because I do have a lot to say about why this movie is so terrible. Force Awakens. <clears throat> now, obviously, from George Lucas. Okay, Disney bought it in 2012, something like that, for $4 billion from Lucas. And we're actually, I was happy about that. I was like, well, good, we can actually get some good movies coming out. Because the prequels weren't that great. They weren't terrible, but they weren't that great. What does Disney do when they come out with the movie? They come out with Force Awakens. It's the same thing as the original Star Wars. With a retread. And we're going to have a female hero. With no character arc. Who's a Mary Sue. Alright. Then you have all these unanswered questions. Who are our parents? Who is Snoke? Who is Kylo Ren? Who are the Knights of Ren? Who are, all these questions. And it has been established in Star Wars through George Lucas that people are born and they have metachlorians and you have to be related to people that have that in order to have the Force. You bring in Last Jedi. After the opening crawl, it starts with a Yo Mama joke. A Yo Mama joke. Nothing makes sense. At the end of Return of the Jedi in the original series, you have a new Republic. There is no more emperor there's no more none of that these people come out of nowhere and they could have made it thrawn but they don't want to give timothy zahn the rights or they don't want to pay timothy timothy zahn because he created the character they don't want to give that guy any money so they create new characters snoke comes out of nowhere takes over everything all right whatever and in the first movie they blow up a planet-sized Death Star. 
Okay. Retread. The second movie, all of a sudden, even though they blew up and defeated whatever the Empire or the First Order or whatever the heck they are, even though they defeated them, you start off and you're in a, a low-speed space chase where gas is involved. Like, what? What? What's the... What? You go through all of this with the low-speed space chase. We just can't catch up to them. And they know the whole deal is that they're tracking them. You could just light speed ahead of them. Just let them go because you got a tracker. Doesn't really matter. Which leads off to our our whole deal in Canto, Canto Bite Casino scene where they're trying to get the tracker off their ship or trying to stop the big ship from tracking them even though they acknowledge that other ships have tracking devices. It's like everything is a plot contrivance. Every single thing. And they make the the male characters in this movie look like idiots. Um, complete idiots. And you got pink haired lady, social justice lesbian, whatever. Um, who, who would actually like that? I mean, who actually likes politics in their movies? I mean, obviously, if you're going to a political movie, that's what you're there for. Nobody goes to Star Wars for politics. Nobody. So... In this movie, you take a beloved character like Luke Skywalker and you make him uh, drink sea monster titty milk. Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. This is still called the Skywalker Saga. And apparently his Skywalker Saga is is drinking... uh, Sea monster, boob milk. That's his saga. Destroying that character, we have Carrie Fisher being a Mary Poppins through space. And then you have this idea that light speed is a weapon now, which it has never been before. And you got all of these things. And The Last Jedi is just a retread of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi of the original trilogy. There's nothing new in there. Except for the fact that Ryan Johnson wants to subvert your expectations. Probably one of the worst movies ever put to film, I would say. Because it's not so bad that it's good. It's not even close. The script is just horrible. Just a really, really, really high production budget for this movie. And obviously the box office for Solo showed that. And I'd be really curious to see, you know, episode 9. I'm not going to see it because I don't care. Um, I really don't care. I don't care about Ray. Mary Sue. Don't care. I kind of like Finn, but they made him look like a bumbling idiot in this movie as well. They made Poe look like crap. So, and the main characters that made them look that way are dead now. One of them by ramming a ship through another ship, and then Carrie Fisher is literally dead. 
So what what am I going to expect for the next installment? What do I got? They even killed Akbar, like off screen. <laughs> Just killed Akbar. <laughs> Not that Akbar is a big character, but come on. <laughs> we need pink pink hair lady in there instead of Akbar. Come on. The decisions that are made by Disney right now, and of course Disney owns all media, and the government needs to step in, and they need to literally squash Disney. Because it's ridiculous now. They own Marvel. How many studios they own? They own Star Wars. They own Marvel. How many? How many studios? They. It gets to the point where you got to say no. You can't. No, you're done. You're done. You got enough. Break you up. This movie upsets me greatly, because I do enjoy Star Wars. I have, of course, seen all the movies, and I have read a great deal of the expanded universe and I understand what they're doing. They don't want to pay anybody, anybody. Disney said, no, all those books, the 150, 200 books that have been written over the last 20 years. No, they don't exist anymore. And their excuse was in one book, Chewbacca got killed by a meteor. And that was their excuse. They own it. They can do what they want. And so what do you have instead? They're replacing it with Mary Sue. A black guy. And uh, what? Mexican dude? I don't know. Poe? I don't know what, what he is. But the points are is that we have to have some sort of social justice crap in here otherwise you know we're not going to make it fine and we're going to hire we're going to hire um this guy who's done nothing at all he's done nothing okay he made an independent movie called brick way back when in 2005 and then he made uh, Looper, which was a $60 million budget, which $40 million of that probably went to uh, Bruce Willis. But that was an okay movie. It wasn't great. It was okay. And he's done nothing. And then, hey, let's let him write The Last Jedi. And what does Ryan Johnson do? Anything that was set up in The Force Awakens... Ryan Johnson throws out in the can. Force Awakens was not even completed when Ryan Johnson was writing his movie. That's a bad way to do business. All right. If you know you're you have to make three movies, okay? Force Awakens comes out and makes two billion. If episode eight comes out and it makes like nothing. They're still going to put out the last thing. They're not just going to cut it off. You know, they're still going to finish it. Ryan Johnson came in there and uh, crapped all over everything that everybody loves and everybody held, held dear. You know, Star Wars is a fairly big franchise. And that's what you got. Ryan Johnson's never going to be working again. As a director, he'll do some like little piddly. Yeah, he's doing some little piddly stuff here. Um, after The Last Jedi, no, he's done. I mean, that was a horrible, horrible movie. And Ryan Johnson is on camera saying, I hope that 50% of the people love my movie and 50% of the people hate it. And this is granted a long time ago when he said this. But what business can operate on that model? I really hope 50% of the time my car starts. I really hope. 
I really hope when I flick the light switch, 50% of the time it goes on. Isn't it better to um, shoot for 100%? 50 50 you're 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 flicking the quarter and you're directing bad man i mean did you imagine that working for a job and you go there and you do your job and like say you're building houses and you're a carpenter what i'm gonna i mess something up i'm gonna tell my boss well, I get it right 50% of the time. What do you want me to say? Well, you're right 50%. That's just the way that I do things. Awful. It's awful. IMDB 7.2. Uh, the big problem with these numbers and like why... Um, here we have the 91% is because these people are all paid. Everybody. They're all paid by Disney. Tens of thousands of dollars to write reviews. Not kidding you. There's 417 people. You got a 91%. 45%, 200,000 people. And the 45% are not getting paid. None of them, none of these people get paid. Okay. You're a big reviewer. They're going to give you $100,000 to write a review. You think you're going to give a bad review? No. Nope. Not going to. That's Disney Mouse. It's Disney Mouse. And it's sad because I did enjoy Star Wars. I really like the EU. I read most of the books, I think. I've I've read at least 50 of them. And it comes down to this. Now that destroys everything that was really ever before this movie. And I don't know if they can retcon this or whatever, but I'm not going to see episode 9. I just ain't. I don't care. I didn't see Solo. I don't care. I mean... <laughs> these morons put out a movie solo after they show Han Solo getting killed. I mean, that is the dumbest decision by any corporate manager, Kathleen Kennedy or whatever. You don't do that because nobody cares. They, they know Han Solo is gets killed. There's no point. What are you going to do a prequel? You're going to prequel on that? guy just got killed literally just got killed no keep rocking and rolling we'll put out that solo oh and i didn't like the comedic way that these guys were doing it so i'm gonna fire them and i'm gonna get ron howard in there well what the hell's ron howard done what has ron howard done in the last 10 years not that let's put him in there Gee, I wonder why Solo lost $100 million. Can't figure it out. Don't know. Every movie after the Star Wars, this Last Jedi, um, is going to lose money. Um, I'm one of those people, I don't know how many others are out there, but Star Wars The Last Jedi has actually, I will say, made people millions by talking about it. You know, some of the channels that I pay attention to on the entertainment side, these guys are getting hits like crazy. And their entire business is basically built around talking about Star Wars The Last Jedi. Their entire business. All of that money could have gone to Disney if they just made a decent movie. They chose not to. They chose to make crap. And they expect people to to just suck it up and take it. You know, and the video game industry has the same problem right now. EA just thinks that they can put out the same crap and people are going to take it. Bethesda thinks they can put out the same crap and people are just going to take it. No. It's, it's coming to a turning point. And I think 
you know, with Star Wars. That was the last, the last deal, the last pin, whatever, the last, it's the last Jedi. No. This wrecked everything for pretty much everything in entertainment. And Ryan Johnson can be very proud of himself for doing that, but he'll never work again. No one's ever going to see a Ryan Johnson movie. I don't care anything about Star Wars. And I am not one of those people who forgets. Okay, I don't buy Sony products because of Star Wars Galaxies video game. Because of the way they treated their customers. And when people came out not liking um, The Last Jedi, they came out and they attacked their customers. And said, you're misogynist and you're racist and, and all this stuff. The same thing EA did. The same thing Bethesda did. Well, if you don't like it, don't buy your thought. Because they think that they're just right up here on the pinnacle and the, the top of whatever. And guess what? Ain't people ain't buying. And most people ain't up there ain't racist. They just don't like your movie. And it's sad and pathetic that whoever the people in charge of their community relations would actually stoop to that level. And you know what that does? Other people see that and they're just not going to see it either. This movie on a whole, Star Wars Last Jedi. Oh, five. As a Star Wars movie, negative 20. I mean, it, it destroys everything. Wrecks everything. It's bad. Um, it There is so much politics in this movie that it's hard to watch. And I fell asleep. I actually did watch it in the theater when it came out. And I fell asleep. So I had to download it off the internet and watch it again. And it took me several days to even go through it because it was so bad. And how things like this could go out there and be there's obviously committees of people there can't just be like well we'll just let ryan johnson do whatever he does there's obviously committees of people and they're all like yeah man this is great um i'd, I'd be i'd like to know who those people are so i could um smack them I mean, because they're wrecking stuff. And George Lucas had this problem when he was doing the prequels. George Lucas is a real big, high and mighty guy. Very egotistical. And everyone was afraid to tell him that, George, you got a bad idea. You, gotta, you shouldn't do it that like that, George. It's not a good thing. Stephen King has the same problem where Stephen King thinks everything he writes is gold and his editors don't rein him in and say, look, you got to cut this down. There are people out there like that. It's still good. You know, it's still, you know, like in the case of Stephen King, it's well-written. Stories aren't always good, but well-written, good, well done. But in the case of like, in the case of George, he didn't have people that he trusted beside him to say, you know, this may be not a good idea. Maybe this is a better way to do it. And his prequels show that. It wasn't. An, and George asked for help from Steven Spielberg and some other people to actually direct those movies. And nobody could because I don't think Spielberg is in the guild whatever they call it, the Director's Guild, he had to do everything himself. So, you know, he gets a little bit of a pass. There's one thing that I've heard, though, about people with The Last Jedi, is how they miss George Lucas' Star Wars, even the prequels. Now, that's saying something, because Phantom Menace was awful. That was an awful, awful, awful movie. And... Last Jedi beats it 
beats it by a lot as being the biggest piece of crap ever put on screen in Star Wars. So that's what I have. That's what I have. I can't go through every plot point. I can go through everything. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of videos on the internet about this movie. It is pretty much breaking the internet. Talking about Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, Lucasfilm, and what's going on with them, the Disney Mouse, and all this. This movie is what pretty well stopped Disney in their tracks. They had all sorts of big plans. We're going to put a movie a year. We're going to put a movie here. We're going to have a TV series. We're going to do all this. We ain't doing nothing anymore. Nope. So anyone out there, don't ever watch anything of Ryan Johnson. Anything. I mean, even Looper wasn't that good. Brick sucked. Okay. I watched it out of curiosity. It was terrible. Yeah, let's give this guy $250 million and go, and let's let him write the script. You know, I can understand the direction. Okay. But Disney is so idiotic and Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy, that they don't actually have all three scripts written. They purchased it in 2012. Their first movie was 2015. You can't write three scripts in three years and put the whole thing together? It doesn't really matter who the directors are if you have a script. Nope. We're going to start filming. Um, whatever. J.J. Abrams deal. And then while he's still filming it, we have Ryan Johnson writing the next one. Who does this? You know, I mean, who who actually does this? Obviously Disney. They got enough money, they don't care. Well, it's going to bite them in the butt because no one's going to see episode 9. And Ryan Johnson shot himself in the foot. The characters in this, you know, I'll end on this. They want to trash the old characters. And they have to get rid of them because they're old. Harrison Ford doesn't want to do it. Carrie Fisher is, of course, dead now. Um, Mark Hamill is like he only did it because Harrison Ford did it. He doesn't want to be in it either. He thought that everything was fine the way it was. But the only reason that people want to see a Star Wars movie is for those characters. And what do they bring in? They bring in a Mary Sue. They bring in a basic, just stereotypical black guy with no character at all. Stereotypical Puerto Rican. And if you look on the bridges of, like, the ships and stuff, it's like all women. It's total social justice crap. And they're focused so much on the color of people's skin and their sexuality and all these things. Lando Calrissian apparently uh, messes around with robots, according to the writer. They, they mess around so much with that that they forget to actually give people character arcs. You know, Finn, in the original one, he had, you know, what is it, Force Awakens? He had a, an arc. Stormtrooper who's trying to escape. Okay. Ray had an arc a little bit. Was she scrounging for food? And whatever, scavenger? A little bit. In this one, you have Vin's a bumbling idiot who can't do anything. 
and Rey is a superhero who is more powerful than any Jedi who has ever been in any movie ever with no training whatsoever. Just because. Mm. Good character arc. Same with Carrie Fisher. Oh, yeah. Not to mention that <laughs> Harrison Ford is still smuggling like 30 years after. Yeah, married to a princess. I think I'm going to go back to smuggling. What? Oh, these stories make no sense. And like I said, the reason they don't make any sense is because people actually know like the expanded universe in the books. Disney does not want to pay the people who created characters and created these things and created these stories. So you get hacks like Ryan Johnson who come up and just do whatever they want to. I don't know. And it's sad that Star Wars went out the way that it did. But it's gone now. It is gone. And all I have to say is, you know, I'm going to do a review about Pure Flix movie. That's going up on Patreon. But ugh, Star Wars is gone, guys. It's gone. That. And we're going to be out of here.